Hi, my name is Justin Kim. Uh, I work for the R&D department of Trossman Robotics. I've been at this job for about a little over a year now. I've worked my way up from being part of the production team to being a part of the R&D team. So a big part of my job, uh, I'm an R&D support, which means you know, for all of our research and development projects that we have going at any given time, it's my job to make sure those projects progress smoothly to kind of help support any of the leads in you know, making sure they have all the things that they need to make these projects you know, continue as smoothly as possible. The thing about being a part of a startup is you kind of wear a lot of hats and my job definitely lets me do a lot of that. Some days I'll be working with the mechanical engineering team and putting together the hardware stuff for the robots that we design. Some days I'll be working with the electrical engineers or the software developers, um, kind of working with the more detailed components, the electronics that goes into the machines, soldering up the cables that we need, things like 3D printing stuff, laser cutting stuff, resin printing stuff, a lot of stuff. My job is to make sure everyone has what they need to you know, progress their projects and make their lives easier. Oftentimes I'll also be a part of the production team to make sure that the customers get the stuff that they order on time as soon as possible. And yeah, that's kind of the gist of what I do at this job. One of the jobs here that I have is I help manage the 3D print farm. A big portion of my job requires a lot of communication with different departments at our office. We have a software development team, the production team, my own R&D manager. And communication is really required because it's my job to make sure everyone has what they need to continue doing their job. They always say communication is just, oh, it's something that we always need is really needed here because if I miscommunicate anything or have any misunderstandings, people's jobs gets messed up. Even here in the 3D print farm, um, I work a lot with the production manager uh, just to understand, you know, what inventory they need restocked. And, you know, I'm the guy that's kind of in charge of putting all of this together and making sure everything's running smoothly. If there's a failed print, I fix that. If there's 3D printer that's kind of going haywire, uh, I try to resolve that too. Looks like we have a failed one here, so we'll stop this. Yeah, so sometimes you get this situation where, you know, things just come off the bed plate. Um, this actually isn't that hard to resolve. It just means, you know, clean everything off, wash the build plate, redo it. Every now and then you'll have a 3D printer that's just completely clogged, and that's when you have to be a little more hands-on with it. Um, but yeah, this one, not that bad. After I joined this company, um, we had another employee that kind of helped me get into it, uh, taught me everything about these guys, some other 3D printers. Now I have one of my own at home and it's been really good because it helps with a lot of the design process and it's a really good tool for prototyping. Uh, another tool that we have at our disposal is uh, this resin printer. This is the one specifically from Forum Labs and we've had this for I don't know, it's been a while. It's been here even longer than I was, so the CEO can tell you how long this has been here. But we use this in very specific use cases where 3D printing is not enough or FDM printing is not enough. And if we have some part that we're designing that's a little more detailed or that needs to be in a different application that you know PLA or PETG just can't handle, that's when we turn to the resin printer. We use this a lot more for prototyping more than finished products but every now and then we will use it for finished products because the resin that we use is meant for more structural uses. And so that's why the resin printer that we have, uh, we kind of use it in both prototyping and production. We move to our laser room. Before we enter this room, we do care about safety. So just in case, you know, use like to use a safety nut safety glasses. Oh shit, please stay away. <laughs> we actually already did start on a cut. This is mainly used for also two things, for production and for prototyping. It's really nice having a laser cutter, especially for prototyping because it helped, like the laser's really fast, right? Especially compared to the 3D printers. So if we need something that's sheet of plastic, which can later turn into like sheet metal, it's really easy just using this as a prototype first, just to know how everything will fit together. And then later when we are ready to move on to the next step, instead of prototyping, we're moving on to like fine tuning for materials, switching that over to metal. 
that's when go to Javier, who I think you've seen already. We cut mainly in acrylic and Delrin. Acrylic is really nice because it's the easiest thing to cut for us here, and you'll find it in a few of our production stuff. None of our new products use it, but a lot of our old arms, uh, the legacy arms will. So for example, all this is from our old, I think, Viper 300. Someone else was actually in charge of this, so I'm just gonna leave it and close this back up. Part of R&D. Uh, we do use a laser cutter for a lot of it. Sometimes it gets a little depressing being in here all the time with laser cutter and all the fumes. In addition to, you know, maintaining the 3D printers, I'm also maintaining the laser cutter and also the resin printer. We actually did maintenance on this this morning. Maintenance is really just, you know, making sure all the lenses are clean, nothing's going wrong with the laser in the back, the exhaust is working properly so that whenever we're cutting something, the fumes don't leak out into the room. So this is kind of the more DIY station for us. Here we'll do multiple different projects like soldering the cables that we need, um, soldering the cables that we need, and soldering the cables that we need. A lot of cables are made in this room. As you can see with all the various components that we have here, basically this is the area that we come to to kind of put together the electronics that goes into our arms, um, whether it's the PCB, whether it's the cables that link one servo to another. Some of them we can buy, but oftentimes we find that for the new projects that we work on, we have very specific use cases and those require customized cables. And that's where I come in after the development team decides, all right, we need this component to link to this component and they have two very different connectors. We'll just purchase those connectors separately and then, you know, figure out how they need to get wired. And my job is to make sure they get the correct wire and the cable to make the projects work. Sometimes we'll just do R&D stuff and it'll just be like one of something. Other times when we're ready to move into production, uh, we'll make like a batch of our products. Here what we have is the controller boards that will go into powering our new arms. This is actually something that I designed. Pretty proud of this one. I came into this company already knowing how to do a lot of CADs, but I'm from the field of architecture, so a lot of my CADing was based on, you know, stuff like AutoCAD and Revit and SketchUp. Here I learned how to use Fusion and because I had a foundation of learning or knowing how to use CAD, uh, it was a little easy to pick up. Still, it's a new program, so it did take a little bit of time and a lot of practice at home after work. Something like this is what I learned to design in CAD uh, on Fusion. It's a box for the controller board that will control the new arms that we have. It's really cool because like, what you'll see is just like a rectangle with a lot of you know, mounting points. The knowledge that I've gained by interacting with a lot of the different components that we have here in the R&D department, we've incorporated a lot of it into to this so say like the heat set inserts the square nuts here learning how to get the correct mounting patterns for the controller board how to get the connectors in from the size like these guys all these cables are customized so we make these in-house honestly this is kind of all my skills starting to get put into one because the box is 3d printed these plates are laser cut all these cables are soldered up here in-house by myself and another employee it's actually really cool if you think about it <laughs> Hey Mario, Hello. say hi. Hi. <laughs> I think one of the most important things about being a part of R&D is you really have to love the process of learning. As I've been a part of this company, I've learned so much. I think a lot of what happens in my job here is I'm sort of a glorified problem solver. I think being a part of the R&D team, you're researching and developing but the foundation of that is you have to first have a problem that you're trying to solve. And you know, being part of R&D, like, no two days are the same for me here. Like one day I could be working on an arm, another day I could be working on a rover, another day I can just be, you know, working on 3D printers or laser cutting or making cables. You're never gonna know everything about any given topic, but as you're researching, as you're learning how to solve specific problems for the users, you realize, oh, no one problem has one single solution. You know, there's always a variation of different solutions that you can combine together to quote unquote, solve it the best. And for someone who's coming into, say, research and development, enjoying that process is a really big part of, you know, being a part of this team. Because realistically, you are going to have a lot of 
problems thrown at you. But the main thing that you have to remember is, you know, you have to enjoy the process of solving that. You have to be ready to accept that there's not just one solution to everything, but you can kind of branch out and expand into different ideas. Yeah, I think that really helps in being a big part of R&D. I think it's really important that you enjoy working with the people that you're surrounded by. It's really cool working here because, you know, you have all these people with different ideas and say we have one problem and we put it onto the middle of a table and everyone comes with a solution, no two solutions are going to be the same, which is really nice, especially for R&D because our job gets easier when we have a lot of options that we can take and having those minds come together to solve our problems really helps to have a product that we can be proud of at the end of the road. I would say don't be afraid to fail because chances are you're gonna fail a lot in R&D, but it's really about learning from those failures and developing something that's even better than what you originally planned. It's time for me to get back to work, so I'll see you guys in the next video. This is our super secret robot that nobody's allowed to know about Correct. yet. Correct, that's why I'm and filming it. The thing is, if it's censored, like it's gonna look like, I don't know, we could be making like a really naughty thing. Maybe this isn't good to put into our company website. I will make it not naughty, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, we'll, yeah. I'll figure out what okay. to put there. I don't know, would it be just be like a black box? No, no, I'll no? make it fun. Yeah? yeah, all right. It's my job. Okay, okay. You know what, you can just do like a photo of Matt right here. Then, could do you know, that actually. That yeah, was not Matt my just holding idea. Holding up a sign that says like secret that. or like classified. Could do that at. actually. He yeah. does have a couple pictures where he's holding stuff up. <laughs> you just have pictures of our company CEO. Yeah. Oh, I have lots of pictures yeah. of our company CEO. Nice. Trust in robotics, helping innovators innovate.